For this last section, I'm going to talk about seizure precautions. So one important point about seizures that I talk about with families quite a bit is that short seizures usually don't cause any problems, don't cause permanent uh, brain damage, and usually don't result in any other neurologic sequelae or other problems. But two things can come up with short seizures. One is seizures occurring at an inopportune time. And the second thing is every short seizure you have puts you at a little higher risk for a prolonged seizure. And a prolonged seizure can cause permanent neurological problems. So there's a few th steps we can take to avoid the problems that come along with short seizures. Seizures at an inopportune time. So for example, um, when you're climbing a tree, uh, driving a car, in a swimming pool or even worse in the ocean, that would be an inopportune time. So one thing I always talk about with families is water safety. I tell them anything in a swimming pool is fine as long as one adult is specifically watching that child. Can't just be the pool lifeguard or the swim coach. One adult capable of taking a child out of the water specifically watching the child with epilepsy. A second part of water safety is any body of water you can't see the bottom of lake, ocean, uh, river. A child needs to wear a life preserver. The reason being is that if a child has a seizure and goes under underwater, uh, which often they do and don't stop breathing, it may be difficult to find them. It will be a terrible tragedy. The second seizure precaution I talk about is heights. I say properly used playground equipment or gymnastics equipment is okay, but any other sort of heights, things like tree climbing or even horseback riding, unfortunately, uh, should be um, um, reserved until the seizures are very well controlled. The third seizure precaution I talk about is helmet use, uh, which is, uh, should be used anyways uh, for things like riding bikes and, and, and skateboards. And you can imagine if there was a sudden loss of consciousness on the bike or a skateboard, uh, potential for head injury. So that helps cover seizures at an inopportune time. Avoiding prolonged seizures, as long as you live in an area with good emergency medical services, is relatively easy. Um, I give patients defined amounts of time and instructions on what to do for seizures. What I might say is for any seizure less than, say, one minute, just have them call me during business hours the next day or later that day. Any seizure that lasts, say, between one and five minutes, you might want to call your neurologist um, anytime, 24-7. And then a seizure lasting more than five minutes, uh, with very few exceptions, is always a call to 911 and a call to the neurologist. Those are general guidelines that you'll have to discuss with your neurologist, but an important point of seizure precautions is avoiding a prolonged seizure. Having a plan in place, what's going to happen for a prolonged seizure. There is a medication, it's a rectal uh, Valium that you can give for prolonged seizures. Usually around three to five minutes is when most neurologists would recommend that. Another good way to avoid a prolonged seizure you may want to talk to your neurologist about that one. One important thing about seizure precautions and lifestyle changes for people with epilepsy in general, I try to normalize things as much as possible, emphasizing to the family that this is a medical condition like many others, and there shouldn't be a significant impact on your life because of your epilepsy. Some basic seizure precautions to avoid seizures at an inopportune time, and then a plan in place for if there is a prolonged seizure. With that and just a couple other of exceptions, maybe a medical bracelet, um, having special permission slips for school, ac school activities, having to talk to babysitters, there should be very little impact on a person's life because of the epilepsy. Thank you for your interest in watching the video. I hope it's given you the information you need to help improve your child's quality of life. Please check back to the website regularly as we'll be frequently updating it with new information.